guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we talk about the new iPhone 5, what's going on with the Wii U, uh, Google Docs versus Office, and so much more. We got AJ with us, Awesome Cast, coming right up. It's the awesome cast 119. It's new studio day. Yay! New studio day. Uh, here we are. <laughs> that's why we're late. And that's why, well, they don't know if they're downloading this. Uh, everybody's rocking in the chat room. I'm here. I am Mike Sword here in these studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the newly rearranged, recombobulated studios. And also with me, as usual, is Chachi on the couch, newly relocated couch. How you doing, Oh, man, sir? I come before Rob this week? I don't know. I just... Yes! It was the easiest thing for me Suck to Suck it, select. Rob! What happened Suck it! Hold on, now I can adjust this on the fly. Suck I like it. this. I like this. So I'm a one man studio team. Because Suck it. Uh, and the man sucking it is Rob <laughs> De La Creta. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> Since that's where we went with that. Suck it. They come, they come to you as a frozen frame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's something going on with the. Like, your Skype's fine. Like, he's still moving over there, right, Chach? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see his reaction. So, oh, so I can do this. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't have to worry about it showing up in the video. Yeah, yes. pretty much. We just yeah. have a still. Suck I don't, it! This is one of those new studio problems. So uh, so this is our representation of Rob and his mini Rob. Hey, if you're watching out. on the video. What? Could his could that video problem have anything to do with the picture in picture? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I would guess so. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll figure that out before next week, hopefully. And also join us from north carolina is uh aj uh no i am coming to you from a wonderful charleston south carolina south this week. carolina the beach is right over there it's like right there oh man i can see the sunset it's beautiful aj actually joined us on the uh the iphone uh coverage we did with uh, uncle crappy mike pound over the beaver county times in the hangout yes i did uh i multitasked well mm -hmm. and um if you guys want to go watch that, that is up at SorgatronMedia.com, and you can hear all of our live reactions to this, or you can hear most of them now as well. Exactly, exactly. Of course, this is the awesome cast. This is the show where we talk about technology, social media, stuff with the internets and the intertubes and the, in and the technologies and, uh, you know, stuff that we're into, you know? And we tell Rob to suck it! And that's apparently the new theme of the show that went along with the new studio as he's stuck in... What's whatever's going on there? <laughs> All right. Well, like I said, uh, Chilla has sent us some mail, and he has some stuff for us to discuss. Um, I didn't get time to read through this, so we're just gonna go with it on the fly, guys. All right. Just wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on uh, on the following. Prices seem a bit high, but there is no talk of battery life. Wait, wait. Hold on. There seems to be Context. need to be a title to this. Oh. Uh, there's a link at the bottom that says Asus Windows 8 tablet pricing comes in high, demand likely low. Oh, there. We there's go. your subject, and go. And go. Well, he says, uh, prices seem a bit high, but there's no talk of battery life. $200 keyboard seems steep. Holy crap. Uh, in the comments, I noted that a lot of ha people uh, can't create only, uh, but only consume on current tablets. Do you think that's true? Uh, how will uh, Microsoft tablet uh, really change that? All, all current tablets support a uh, keyboard and Android supports a mouse as well. Uh, which I actually really like. He's actually showing me uh, uh, his setup there. Uh, Citrix on iPad can use your iPhone as a touchpad mouse, uh, which makes remote work really slick, and I don't have to carry a ton of crap with me. Um, so, what do you guys think? What do you think, guys? Think of uh, uh, the pricing so far there with the with the uh, Windows 8 tablets they're talking about. Same I'll way? say this: I really like the idea of the Microsoft Surface and the Windows 8 tablets. Mm -hmm. The problem is. Um, and the link, and the link's actually going. It's the Asus, Asus, Asus uh, Vivo Tab RT, the Asus Vivo Tab, and the Asus Tai Tai Chi, Tai Chi. Hmm. And so the yeah, the Tai Chi is an eleven point six inch, uh, nineteen twenty by ten eighty tablet um, with a keyboard, and it'll retail for thirteen hundred. The Vivo Tab will start at eight hundred and have a keyboard dock for two hundred. Mm -hmm. And the Vivo Tab RT will start at six hundred with a two hundred dollar dock, so you could get into Windows Eight Tablet with a keyboard for effectively eight hundred bucks. 
I like the idea of this because I travel when, when I travel. I have I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, I also carry an iPad. I also have my uh, at the currently Galaxy Nexus with me. I could get away with using a tablet for a good many things, except for the use of a mouse. Uh, I know that Apple, for the longest time, and, and still does, does not want people to be able to use a mouse with the iPad because then it takes away from the sweet, sweet touchscreen. The problem is that I would like to use my iPad for my day-to-day work, but I need, I need a mouse to do that. This is a fairly accurate on touch-designed applications. For audio, you- he's holding up his finger. I'm holding up my finger. <laughs> oh, I didn't know if you could even see me. <laughs> I just realized that now you can't see me. Good. <laughs> this, my finger, is a, is a very uh, accurate touching and pointing device on a tablet where it's designed for with big buttons or larger than normal keys or normal than larger inputs. On the things that I work with where it's very link-directed and very... Uh, you know, they slam as much as they can into a, into a UI. I need a mouse pointer for that. It's very difficult. In fact, it's almost impossible to do it with just a, with, with a finger. So that's the sort of thing that leads to this, this, you know, this sort of tablet thing working. I love the idea of it because I'd love to have a thing that I can, you know, a dock or, or a tablet in a keyboard dock that I can use all day long for work. I don't want to get back when I get home or I get back to my hotel and I want to just sit on the couch and, you know, mess around on Twitter, I can just pull it out of the dock and have a regular tablet. I love the idea of that versatility. It's just I need to see somebody execute on that properly. And I think Microsoft, from what they were showing, looks good. But I need to see that in real life before, you know, saying it's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, this is this is all promises right now. And it's from so many different manufacturers. Let's see how it works. We don't even know if people are going to like the Metro thing. Because the only people really playing with it are journalists and, and you know, technophobes like us, you know, um, or technophiles. Sorry, that's, uh, we're not afraid of technology. Um, got my words mixed up. Uh, of technology. What's that? It's daylight's out of me. I'm surrounded by screens all the time. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you, you'd love it in the studio right now. Um, oh. And kind of going along with that, he's got another, he's got, you know, again, with Microsoft coming up. Uh, they just announced uh, some stuff with uh, pricing for Office 2013, including a subscription model. Um, yeah, it, it, it's starting at like $100 for a year for per a subscription. Um, do you really make out with that? Or is this just something that so they know they have the latest version and support and everything uh, for the big, bigger business setups? Or and, 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 and I'm sorry, Chile is asking in the email... Uh, why are people st- paying, still paying for Office with Google Docs, Open Office, and much other much cheaper alternatives? What is Microsoft really offering its users? The fact that it really is Microsoft Office. That's what I think too. I, instead of Google Docs or Open Office, where Google Docs is a wonderful, wonderful thing. The problem is that you can't run macros with it. You can't run. You can barely run macros with Open Office, and there's a number of applications that I know a couple of large companies that have. I'm not kidding you. Access 97 databases with custom written UIs that have mm-hmm. never been updated, and they're not going to get updated, but they need them to do their jobs. Yeah, yeah. It, that's the point that they're reaching, and Microsoft knows that. And they know that they can pull this off because long, long ago, they pushed Access as a way for you to write simple applications for your users. This is why Lotus Notes hasn't completely gone away either. Uh, <laughs> it's just sad. It's not. I'm not kidding you. There, there's. I know companies that have Lotus Notes that have migrated everything off of Lotus Notes, except for these cost written applications that they can't replicate on something like SharePoint. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, we're getting way into like enterprise tech. Um, I think. The, I think the paying for all people still pay for office because it's microsoft office and they think they need microsoft office when they really don't i think it's habit um i know i guess send a lot of stuff um you know i have pages and everything on my mac at my one workplace or on my laptop or whatever and everybody's sending me uh word documents and i ask hey can you make that pdf hey can you do this um and i think everybody else it's it's really um just just habit 
like Microsoft's thing that I have. Uh, if you're in, like these guys are in the medical industry, everybody else has office because they're the bigger corporations, the high marks, the UPMCs, the doctor's offices, et cetera, et cetera, that are, you know, pretty much stuck with, you know, probably the macro situation that you're talking about, AJ. Um, mm-hmm. So they need to make sure when they get a send a file, it's not going to go goofy on them. Because I got sent a Word document. I opened it up in Google Docs just by default uh, through my email, and half of the flyer disappeared. So, and they're doing goofy graphic stuff, so, so formatting is going to be all over the place because they're pretty much doing their, their you know, visual, you know, uh, graphic work in Word um, just because that's what they know what to do. Um, Chilla says he's more interested in the uh, consumer point of view. As a consumer, why would I pay $90 a year for uh, or more for, for a box version? Um, I think I think consumers I, again. I think they just don't know. Like, where's the thing that I get? Things the word is the thing that I do to you know I get to do this. Or they have a Microsoft Works from ages ago on their old computer, and they're just like, it's my word processor. Who cares? I print it out and do my uh, my things. Uh, but I think more and more people are going to be picking up on that Google Docs. It really is the enterprise. I think that's going that's making them money. It, this really isn't a consumer based business at this point, is it? No. I mean, they, they, they still sell the student and teacher version, which is what every kid gets told they need before they go to college because they're just going to type papers all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, you need Microsoft Word when you go to college. Occasionally, you need Excel, and you really need PowerPoint. So, yeah, I guess those three. I've never seen anybody need Access, and I took, I took a database class in college <laughs> in, which used uh, Access, which was shameful. It was very shameful I worked that that at, was a thing. I did work at a company where um, uh, Access was where we inputted our video database. Yeah. That was you just You put in, you typed in, like, this is the key, this is the video that it goes in. And yeah, you can write, yeah. like, a really quick little dirty database application that can track those sorts of things. I had a, We had yeah. an inventory yeah. system that had, like, 30,000 items in it. It was uh, entirely in Access 97. For yeah, no reason I, at we all. Were, we were well over uh, two thousand uh, raw tapes that we we're going through. Uh, you know, th- thousands more entries because they would be there would sometimes be you know it was per clip a lot of the times. So, um, so yeah, it's still a thing. And we were all based in .NET, so you know it was easy for us to say, hey, let's you know let's do a database and make that searchable. And because it, uh, it used to be just I key- keyword search th- search through the Access database. This was like I don't know eight years ago. So, I mean, it, it's still out there. Some people still need that. Um, I, feel, I feel like uh, something that's kind of happening in the whole, uh, we'll call it the, uh, the home office word processing space, mm-hmm. if that's a space. So, uh, like, space. what happened in design with, like, InDesign versus Quark Express and Quark and all that stuff is uh, a lot of design houses didn't want to switch to Adobe products because they invested, like, upwards of you know sixty thousand dollars in add-ons for quark which is a layout program <laughs> <clears throat> so they didn't want to change and so for the longest time you had students coming out of college where they were taught in this sort of like open system where like you're just getting started so there is no investment in uh in this in this like predisposition of software companies it's just like use what works for you and in design adobe worked for everybody very quickly and very well um, whereas when it comes to word processing, you can get by in a college career with Google Docs or OpenOffice or any of that stuff. Because like AJ was saying, you, you don't really need, like you're not running macros in Excel unless you're doing some real nerdy biochemistry stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even then, there's like, if there's an open source movement, there's one in biochemistry. Um, Hell, but, there's open source in video editing. Yeah, but so they have the opposite thing in that. So what happened in the design industry is eventually the entire design workforce got out of college and said, what the heck is this Quark thing you're using? I feel like, you know, Betty Rubble trying to get my software going. Why don't you switch to Adobe? And eventually they said, okay, we're going to take the hit of like $60,000. We're going to start over because there's so many resources available for Adobe and and it makes sense. And we now have a workflow that works from the old dudes coming through the office to the new kids like just starting as interns. But when it comes to word processing, there's the opposite that's true, that you can invest, like you come into a company that has invested money in macros, in exchange servers, in everything that exists on the Microsoft platform, and you say like, well, I've been using Google Docs. And they're like, well, that's cool. Here's your copy of Word. You have no reason to say no because it does a thousand times more than the software you're using, even if you're not using all the features. 
Yeah. Yeah. So then you get used to it and then, you know, your home computer then has office on it. Cause that's what you're using at work. Yeah. So uh, no I don't think I have office. On, no, I do have office on my home machine. Cause I use, I occasionally use it for work. Yeah. Uh, cause you get, one, you get one reason of those. I have it. I, uh, my wife and I, when we, you know, exchange documents and stuff like that, um, I do it entirely on Google Docs. We just share documents on Google Docs all the time. And there's collaborative stuff in, in Office, but I don't need to worry about somebody else having the same version of Office. Because let's be honest, if I'm conversing with different offices, with different physical offices, uh, some of them are still ro- running Office 2003. And if I, if I try to use one of these new spiffy, hey, let's share a document and collaborate like we're doing like for the doc here for the show. Like I see all you guys and we can change things on the fly. Uh, usually I get naughty words uh, from people. Um, it, you know, it, it seems like such a big barrier to get to that point. Yeah, you can do that in an office setting when the big corporate setting between your internal offices, but you know me. If I if I wanted to say to everybody doing this podcast, hey, let's use that collaborative thing. You know, none of us are going to put the money into that just to be you know caught up with it. We'll use Google Docs; it's free and it's easy. So, mm-hmm. all right, uh, let's move on. He's got another one here. Uh, do really do people really need an iPad Mini? How will those prices? Uh, come in if the ipad starts at 399 ipod touch comes at 299 uh why did they destroy the ipad nano as a watch concept um you know i've been hearing a lot of talk about that since the iphone uh announcements uh last week um i think i i don't know ipad mini i don't i don't believe they're going to do until they announce it to be honest, um, yeah, uh, some of the comments in there again, they're talking about like an iPod Touch coming in at two ninety nine for the two. I think it's the thirty two gig version, one ninety nine. Like it, like you look at the iPod lineup to the iPhone iPad lineup, and and one thing they say every time they do one of these announcements is like, wow, they really have every price point covered. If I have three hundred dollars in my pocket, I'm getting either a really good iPod Touch or I'm getting an iPhone or maybe I'll swing another hundred dollars and get that iPad too. That's that's only four hundred dollars. You know, um, so there seems to be not really space in that lineup because, geez, you do three ninety nine for like a low end iPad mini. I, I do them, are the minis maybe just a hundred dollars off from what the ten inch is at that point? Probably, yeah. I mean, what's the what's the price difference on the the Kindy the Kindy <laughs> the Kindy the Kindy? You know, K I N D I the the Kindle. <laughs> Um, the seven inch Kindle and the yeah, they're the um, inch it's Kindle. one fifty nine for the old for an upgraded version of the old version. Uh, the you know the original, just kind of a spec bump thing. One ninety nine for their HD uh, seven inch, and then the nine point something inch is around three ninety nine. And wait, I no no no, no I'm sorry, no, it's two ninety nine so for that. It's one fifty nine it for the old one, one ninety nine for the new seven inch, three mm-hmm. two ninety nine for the base nine inch and then and the jump hundred for the 4 glt yep. so it's like an extra 150 bucks for an extra three inches or whatever in the kindle basically basically yep. but they're in a different game i think everything's going to run a little bit higher because amazon's amazon's uh business is not the hardware right right, they're, right. Their business. I, I was just curious because they're the other um like uh Miss Bossy No Pants in the chat room last week was asking why the Kindle was was seven inches, like why they they look tiny in comparison to what we're used to as iPads, and that was just because the Kindle was originally developed as an ebook reader, not as a tablet, and mm-hmm. now it's being used as a multimedia device, which is yeah. why it seems weird. Yeah, the seven inches seem like more of an update, like an upgrade. Yeah. So in the sense of like the iPad Mini, like we've gotten used to, like this is a multimedia platform, and I feel that when you, I like I don't. When I look at the iPhone, I see it as a lot of things, but multimedia platform doesn't seem like a really strong descriptor. Like, it's a communication device. It has, like, small applications on it and things like that. But when I'm thinking multimedia, I'm thinking, like, videos and, and like, high engagement type stuff, which is what I see on the iPad. And I feel that 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 mini size, that hypothetical iPad mini, like, it works really well for books because it's a big, you know, page of text. But beyond that, it's just not quite what you're looking for when you want interactivity. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree, Rob. And, and as my iPad sits right there, um, it's it. I when I read on my iPad, I do feel like you know what? I would really like it if this thing were just a shade smaller. I really do. 
Uh, that's the only time. Uh, I really like the fact that I do have a 10 inch screen to work with. Um, is it 10 inch viewable? I don't remember. On the iPad? It, yeah. I think it is. I think it's like, well, I'm thinking like 10.1s with those other ones. I think. It's, well, I don't know. I don't have, <laughs> I uh, have a set of calipers next to me, but not a ruler. <laughs> I can look it up. Here. Well, you can look at how thick it is. Mm hmm. I can. Uh, I can tell you exactly how thick it is. Uh, six. Plus. Well, it's actually nine point five. Yeah, it's nine a, and a half. It, yeah, it's nine and a half for the entire thing. Uh, so I mean that. I think it's an eight inch viewable. Is it width, depth, size, and weight? Screen. Uh, yeah, it comes out to like six. Nine point seven inch diagonal LED backlit glossy. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so you're getting uh, uh, this, uh, between this and the Kindle Fire. The Kindle Fire. HD, the big one, is still just a shade smaller than the iPad. Yeah. So, at that point, the problem is, is that people have latched onto the iPad with a completely different realm of applications. Um, you get a lot of the, uh, like Tweetbot, in case in point, Tweetbot. They take advantage of the extra screen real estate to make a slightly different you know, use of the screen, even the Twitter for iPad app that just got updated today with a slightly tweaked interface compared to the, compare the phone version, which effectively at this point is the same regardless of what platform you're on and compare that to the Twitter for iPad app. They're completely different types of applications. They use the screen differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't see Android doing that. I don't, uh, as somebody who's been using and a Galaxy Nexus. This is 4.65. If I went up, mm, let's call it two and a half inches, I'd have a Kindle Fire. Yeah, and, and, and they're releasing a five inch next March. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, five inch phones, no thanks. I can barely hold this one, and this is like a half inch smaller. That's why I'm I'm actually really excited about the 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 iPhone five. Um, I don't know if we're if that was a seg. I don't think that was a seg. I hope it wasn't a seg. <laughs> I want to touch on this other one before we do seg there. Um, HTML5. Zuckerberg says it was a mistake. Did you, any guys follow on this one? Because it was. Because it was. Well, it was. You know, the, the app was horrible. Well, it, do you remember when I I brought up the story of Project Spartan? Yeah, yeah. They were going to build an HTML5 based application and then that way they could make changes on the fly and not have to worry about going through apple to get there mm -hmm. um i think what they realized is that native apps just perform better um in addition to the fact that the uh do you, you guys also remember the time that javascript when they brought out the the new javascript engine for the iphone they said java's way faster Except if you're using the web browser through applications or off of shortcuts of the desktop because uh, <laughs> off of the springboard. Because if you do that, then no, you don't get that engine. It's only if you go through Safari. Yeah. Everybody was mad. Like, that's the sort of thing that I think he's running into is that, like, listen, people want a native application. You have a screen to work with. It's a completely separate input. You building an HTML5 is cool, but sometimes native is better. And right now, I'm I'm in the opposite boat with some enterprise pieces of software because they're using, uh, they're based their their native application, but they're only for Windows, which stinks as a Mac user. Um, and I'd like them to go to HTML5, and they're pushing a web client that's kind of sort of HTML5 but misses some key points. Um, that's the sort of thing that I think I think for things like Facebook, where it is a website. They could have. They could maybe make some improvements and go. Some native apps could benefit from going to a web-based application to reach a larger audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I I got nothing on that one. I just know the old one sucked. I know every Facebook application ever has sucked. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. They're always crashing. It's, you know, it's like really I mean, impressive how much suck is involved. Like, I feel like above the Facebook um, mobile app department, there's the suck department, which has to ruin the work of the mobile department to make sure that you have a horrible experience. 
<laughs> like they're trying. Like they're really trying. They're like, no, you can't enjoy this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a giant steamy deuce on your birthday cake. And this is what you get for an application every time, no matter what we do. And then we're going to blame it on the technology. Yep. Yep. All right, let's get right into it. Probably what a lot of people went on. Our thoughts on the iPhone 5 was announced last week. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. What, 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 what? I will say this. Okay. I, uh, as with the, in regards to the Facebook app, there is somebody who's actually trying real, real hard to not make me hate it, and that's Twitter. I've actually tried now using the official app on more than one occasion, and it hasn't been awful. I've been, I, lean, I've been leaning towards it. Honestly, even the discontinued, so yeah, rumored uh, Mac OS app. Yeah, I, it's not been bad. The only, there's one feature. Listen to me. Twitter, if you're listening, it's me. It's AJ. Can you give us the ability to change how we quote tweets? Mm. I don't, that's all I want. That's the only thing I want. And I'll, I, I won't need another third-party application again. I really won't. I can't think of things that are in third-party apps that I care about. I know there's people who are screaming about mutes. I don't. I don't use them. If people just annoy me, I just. I just either don't follow them or just ignore what they say. Is there? Is there no mute in native Twitter? Ooh. Really? Uh, yeah, that was that was like a tweet bot or something. Okay, well, well, let's let's touch on that then while we're while we're at this point. So, as you guys see on the Today Show of all places, they rolled out the new uh, layouts for your profiles on Twitter. Really? Yep. Broker one? Uh, yeah, broker has one. Actually, I got one. I got got linked right here. Uh, yeah, Al Broker. A lot. Of, a lot of them have their own Twitter breaking news. Has its own uh, Twitter update. It's basically just a p- bigger picture um, at the top. Um, and I presume all the rest of this is just kind of what you usually do with the background uh, that you could do before. Bigger pictures here um, on the left. So I mean, really, it's just a little bit of a rearrangement. In the long run. And I guess this is something that's going to roll out to the rest of us uh, over time. I didn't see any option to upgrade my profile just yet. Uh, so, yeah, Al Roker, Matt Lauer, uh, the, it's the breaking news, uh, Twitter, Ryan Seacrest got, got wind of this. I guess this just broke this morning on the Today Show, um, which I, I want to watch a clip because I, I hear it's really interesting to see how they had to explain what Twitter does to their general audience. Yeah, I mean, so. the, the whole audience thing seems a little weird. I wonder if this is like, because I, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm pretty sure the, the I can't remember the name of the awesome show we're talking about. The, what today, show is it? the today Show? The Today Show, thank you. I feel like the, uh, I feel like the audience of the Today Show is not their major demographic. Okay. I mean. But the, but the Today Show is the place where you can talk to a potentially new and huge demographic. You got to remember, I, right. when you look at everything Twitter's doing, Twitter is the weird. They, we don't matter to Twitter anymore. NBC matters to Twitter. Look at all the stuff they did for the Olympics. Look at how they serviced up, you know, this guy bashing NBC to them and deleted his account. You know, they're sucking up to the big guys like NBC so they can reach those potential audiences, so they can justify themselves get advertisers this is part of their new master plan and this is why they want control over everything and they're they're you know you know butting out everybody with the api that we've been hearing over the last two months they're asserting their control they're reconfiguring basically what twitter is which is something which is another outlet for big guys like this so they're turning (laughs) they're turning twitter into comcast well, I guess you could look at it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're kind of like like got a fierce stranglehold on the cojones of all of the content that's coming out, mm-hmm. and they're trying to tighten that grip as much as they can. I mean, I know yep. that their their thing on Good Morning America or whatever. I'm never going to remember. It's the Today Show. It's the most um, generic sounding you can think like of. Trying to convince your mom that she cares about the UI design of Twitter. Um, no, they're just going to hey, let's talk about this thing. Because you're not using it yet, and that's <laughs> well. I, from from what I hear, it sounds like that it was mostly people, them explaining what Twitter was for the majority of, of the uh, of the segment, and whoever it was from Twitter. Do, 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 let's see if we can find the name here. Uh, he basically topped uh, popped in for like ten seconds. Was like, yeah, and now it looks like this. It looks like this. Please start using it. Please. Yeah, By yeah, the yeah, way, yeah, can I really point out that Ryan Seacrest is the one with the cr- was the first one with the creative profile picture. Um, Where he took, he made the big picture behind the little picture, like this one here. So it's like a framed of it's like a frame of his face. 
Oh, wow. I didn't realize yeah. that. I was like, why does he have a square so we can recognize which one he is? Yeah, they lined it up. That's interesting. Cause, yeah, because you look here. Look here. You got the little picture of Al Roker, and he just put some generic picture of, of the weather oh. behind him. Today shows the logo, and they have their kind of splash page. And then Ryan Seacrest has – wow, that's good. Well, you, you can't think Ryan Seacrest did that. It was It's whoever runs his Twitter. It's his agency. Yeah, his his agency is is very smart when it comes to this. Listen, actually. good for his agency because yeah. he's going to get the credit for having the creative one. When you remember when Facebook did like the the Timeline. side picture and then like big three pick your first three pictures at the top and people were using that to make like a fancy. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, and Google Plus did so- something the same way. Google yeah. Plus was doing something real similar, and they people were using that creatively, and people were like, "Oh, that's really cool. Let me try that." Ryan Seacrest is the first one for Twitter, everybody. Just putting that out there, putting it down right now. Congrats, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest. There you go. Congratulations. 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 Oh, uh, let's see. Was I ever read Kelly? Hold on. Let's see if they have one of these. Um, but th- there was a little bit of coming out of this, though. Uh, there was an article saying that the av- the advertisers, aside from the Today Show, you know, everybody that kind of got the uh, first hit on this morning, none of the other big corporations knew this was coming. They were told something was coming, something was going to change very soon, and here it is. So now you have everybody else. This is definitely Twitter pay- playing favorites because you look at probably Coca-Cola, Pepsi, you know, whatever other big brand now look like they're behind. Yep. So, how does that make them feel? You know, it, it's just the interesting, interesting new way to roll something like this out. Uh, well, no, it's a way to get. It's a they, they're playing the jealousy card, and they're going to say, "Well, why didn't you call us?" And they say, "Well, Pepsi paid us a load of money for uh, to do the you know to advertise on on Twitter, and you didn't." And they go, "Well, we'll double it," and then they get paid more. Okay, so they're they're playing the game. They're playing them. the game now. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So, um, so I, I think this is definitely a little bit of that game plan. What you know? Yeah, they've been pissing off all the developers, all the you know, a lot of us because the stuff we like to use is, is not, starting to not work. Not work. If they start taking Twitter out of Flipboard, I'm going to be pissed. And uh, you know, already people are using Twitbot, you know, Tweetbot. I'm sorry, uh, seeing what's going on there. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, oh, and, and aside from that, we were talking about a little bit in advance here. Uh, the iPad app got updated. I guess no more of the overlapping kind of thing going on. Uh, yeah, would you like to see it? I have it you, here. You got it handy there? I haven't updated mine just yet. I so do. We, we got you there. All right, hold on. Uh, let's see. And then I go here, and then um, any of my followers. Sorry about that. Awesome cast at the top of the page, by the way, kids. Awesome cast <laughs> at the top of the page. So here you go. Here's what the app looks like now. Okay. Sorry, I didn't even proofread and to see if there's anything uh, in here that's terrible. Uh, no, it's all right. Um, yeah, so instead of having the really thin bar here on the left, you now have uh, four words, and then, um, yeah, so there's that. Yeah, it, it, it seems like there's a lot of white space, it, it, it's, it's very similar to basically how the web version is, which is good because it, it was like the one app that didn't fit any other one's format. Uh, however, I will say this though: if uh, if you do tap a link, it does slide in. Okay. So you still get. So here's the the awesome cast uh, thing. I don't know how well you guys can see this because I can't see my own video. Okay, yeah, pull it up a little bit more. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. There it is. So now it slides in, and you can still slide it back, Are and kind of sure like go version? over and kind of split the screen a little bit there. Oh. Huh. So, so there you go. They're changing stuff again. I, at least on Twitter, you can't have giant boards of uh, people saying change it back. Um, all right. Now, can we talk about the iPhone? Yeah, go ahead. Rob, you mad? Matt, you're, Rob's mad. What am I mad about? I, well, wait. We didn't get to that point. You're always uh, mad about Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get, to, we'll get to that point. We'll get to that point. Well, first, okay. There it is. There's the iPhone 5. It's thinner. It's taller. It's widescreen. All your apps are not going to be stretched. You'll just have bars. Um... I, you know, it, it, I would I would continue to update if I was due for a phone. I'm looking forward to the iPhone 5s because I figure this will be the design. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? A uh, aluminum back? Is it now? Yeah, yeah no more glass because I'm not really crazy about the glass. It looks nice, but damn, I I'm just afraid I'm going to break the thing. Uh, four inch Retina display. Uh, they're big. They updated the wireless a bit. A6 chip, so the performance has kicked up a bit. 
Um, sapphire, sapphire lens, I understand. Yeah, I guess the cover isn't uh, uh, the Gorilla Glass. It's the sapphire stuff that'll, that won't scratch so easy. Uh, three microphones. Um, so there's like actually, there's actually a front microphone, like when you're doing video. Yeah, there's like a front, bottom, and back. I love that. I love that. It is so stupid that your microphone's like on top of the phone. I keep covering this stupid thing by accident. Um, and of course, the iOS 6, uh, which uh, we'll, we'll talk about that too. So uh, so what do you think? I I, I get it. I'm, it's not blowing me away or anything like that, but I would continue my, my, my you know, Apple line and, and get the next one if I was due for it. But I'm not. I'm on a 4S and I'm fine. I was really, um, I mean, not really surprised, but uh, there was a lot of people who were, who were, I mean, I'm one to complain about people being angry, but there was a lot of articles coming out all over the place about how um, the iPhone 5 was going to fail and how, you know, it was the most meaningless product launch to ever come out of Apple and how it's not a big deal and how Android has do? like bigger developments product to product. And all of it was mostly unfounded and just kind of angry. And it was weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, listen, Apple uh, knows that they don't have to come out with like earth shattering things every time. They just have to do things really well and have it not be terrible. Um, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Um, I am looking to get the iPhone 5 because, well, I can't help myself. And number two, I've been meaning to go to uh, Verizon. Uh, I've been an AT&T customer for a long time, and um, my current uh, place of work uh, for this week, uh, I have I don't have AT and T service around where it is for four miles. Jeez. So, yeah, it, it, Verizon just has better service where I go. So I I have to switch at this point. What before when I was in Pittsburgh and I just you know I did you know just went from my house to work and back. AT and T service completely fine, no yeah. business, no problem, but. Where, where I go now, I need to switch carriers. And if I'm going to switch carriers, then I might as well get an iPhone 5. Um, the uh, interesting part, though, is uh, I had a wonderful conversation with a lady at AT&T who was trying to help me get out of my contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, completely willingly, by the way. Um, she... Uh, by the way, I apparently did not have the new updated Twitter... Or, because it's telling me that I can update now. Yeah, I thought that looked familiar, what you were showing yeah. off there. I'm like, well, that doesn't slide in. I hit download, and it they were showing like, it off just on... now before the show, I downloaded it. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I hit update, and it says, Twitter, new version. And I'm like, what? what? Why did I just download <laughs> that when you told me to download it, you jerk? Anyways, um, the just with the, like, the iPhone 5 fits what I want. I've had the, this 4.6-inch screen. Mm-hmm. In the Galaxy Nexus, which is a fantastic phone. If you're going to go buy an Android phone, this is the one to go buy. Uh, either this or a Samsung Galaxy S3. Uh, uh, one of the people that I've been working with this week has one absolutely loves it. But Galaxy Nexus has been pretty awesome for me. The thing I love about the iPhone and the reason that they made the smartest decision, there was a thing that uh, Rob's uh, counterpart, who's far more famous on the Internet, uh, John Gruber, um, made a very... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's what it is. It really if you don't down understand to. that, look them up. Um, did, did, you, um, um, did you actually see the shirt that I'm wearing? No, no I didn't. Do you have the star on your shirt? I am. <laughs> You're wearing the star shirt, no, aren't you? See it. um, um, it's worth. I'm going to take a picture and send it to you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, go go the, on. The thing that's, that's, that, that's important is that on this phone, I cannot hold the phone securely and tap the far right side of the screen. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I can't get to the top corner of the screen without maneuvering my hand to the point where it could drop at any second. The iPhone kept its width and just got a little taller. It actually got a, just a shade wider, like by a hundredth of, a, a hundredth of an inch, which is nothing in your hand. You're able to tell. But they went taller to get to a four-inch screen. That four-inch screen makes it a 16, 16 by 9 widescreen, native. And it has effectively the 
resolution of most desktop monitors from like the year 2003. And it's running at 1136 by 640, which is just a bit higher. Um, it's they made they took the effort to make it a four inch screen to give it a bigger screen without making the hand holding experience different. That is impressive to me. I just I, that blows my mind that they went all the way to making a new phone, and the phone is only like I think a half inch taller. Actually, it's a third of an inch taller. It's thinner, um, and it's thinner. And they made they made that it's an to me it's an engineering marvel. Mm -hmm. um, because I have this, and this is a very thin phone, um, but it has certain things that make it not so thin. So they made they, they did something here where they made the phone very thin. But they gave it this little hump at the bottom for the speaker. Um, the camera actually sticks out of the phone. So it's actually raised here. These are the sorts of things that, that develop or that manufacturers of other phones. I'm looking at you, Motorola. You do this all the time. They say that we have this super thin phone and it goes, it's very thin from here down. But then there's this like giant lump up here for the camera. And it's they're like, like they, we couldn't, have the they couldn't figure out how to squeeze that in there. And that's where Apple solves the problem. And that's why they're the better engineers, I guess, or the better, the better looking phone. That's why that sticks out versus the other ones. Um, yeah, I, I think, again, this is iterative. You know, we weren't impressed that the writing, the, you know, the people that were sitting there live blogging or whatever, like we were that day, were like, wow, nothing really kind of blew me away. But there was enough to say, well, that's better. Okay, that's better. Okay, that's better. You know, there was nothing to say. I, I, well, the other question is, I, this is another instance where people are going to say, well, Android keeps is, is still eating Apple's lunch. A, uh, uh, Android's doing this and that and the other thing with their, with their operating systems. There's no real huge improvements with iOS. I think the bigger, the bigger thing here was that, oh, I don't know, we had a fully built mock-up phone a month ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing was like earth shattering new. It was a confirmation of literally everything we knew. Yeah. We had iOS 6 because that was announced in June. And everybody, because Apple is on a very predictive release cycle, everybody knows this. So they know that in June, they're going to announce a new version of the iOS 6. Mark my words, I'll put money on it. iOS 7 announced next year at Worldwide Developer Conference. Yeah, it's clockwork. Everybody expects it. Everybody knows when to look for a phone. And if you're not interested in making sure, because I mean, there's people like, like they're talking like a month ago. It's like, well, I got to get a new phone. Well, wait a month. It's like, no, I need a new phone now. I'll just get whatever's good now. That's fine for them. You know, right. my, 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 my in-laws, they don't care that they have 3GSs. They, the only thing they care about is they don't have that front cam so they can do uh, the FaceTime and the, and the Google Hangouts that we've been doing um, on those phones. But other than that, and now that's a free phone. As soon as their contract's up, they're getting an iPhone 4 just so they have the face camera. And, and, and that's the other thing. I really think like this is the first time where your free phone kicks the ass of most phones out there. Yep. Because you can get an iPhone 4 for free. Yep. That's a tremendous phone. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, that's the phone I have now. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. You're just <laughs> really kind of like, wow. That's 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 my phone. Huh. It's now, two years. I mean, now, I now, now the everybody has it. when it came out. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. So now, the precedent that they're setting is when your contract expires, the phone that you could have paid two hundred dollars for when you started your contract is now free. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's good because now every, anybody can get an iPhone. Now everybody can do FaceTime. In a year from now, everybody will be able to do Siri. Mm -hmm. Anybody and buying other, new phones, yeah, at least. I mean, it creates the ecosystem that they've been trying to create where, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the iPhone is the, the iPhone is good. The iPhone is great. All hail the iPhone and all that. <laughs> but the iPhone is better when everybody has one. Yes. It creates the best experience for everybody. So at that point, everybody's using iMessage. You know, everybody can make these the the phone calls with the the, the FaceTime calls. It took me a second. What am I ninety? Um, <laughs> and all this stuff works together as this ecosystem. So the Apple ecosystem spreads. So by saying that, you know, you can now get this phone for free, and we're not going to give you the POS. We're not going to give you like the flip phone version of our phone. We're going to give you what is a pretty rock'em sock'em type phone that lets you engage with everybody who just bought the brand new phone in a way that is not bad at all, mm -hmm. then everybody wins. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that this is, and this is the big thing that people keep 
junk on Android about. Uh, hey, Verizon Galaxy Nexus users, how's Jelly Bean working out for you? <laughs> Remember that time you bought the flagship phone? Yeah, it's not the flagship phone anymore. Sorry about that. Um, you're not going to have Jelly Bean for another probably month or two. Meanwhile, the exact same phone, effectively, the only difference is the radios. The Verizon one has CDMA and LTE, and mine has uh, Verizon's HSPA. Uh, HSPA Plus, I'm sorry. I have Jelly Bean. I got, as soon as it came out of the box, I literally I turned on the phone, I hit system update, and ta da, Jelly Bean was sitting there. And when Google comes out with a new version and it's 4 1, it's 4 1 1 right now. So when it's 4 1 2, shout out to Pittsburgh. When that version comes out, I'll have it on my phone immediately. No problems, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. That's what makes, that's what made Apple's move when they said, we're coming out with the iPhone. I went, okay, who's going to screw this up? And then they said, oh, well, we're, we partnered with AT&T, and I went, oh, you partnered with AT&T. at and is going to ruin that phone. They're going to ruin it. They're going to put all sorts of stupid applications on it. We control the software, and we, were going, we are going to put our software on there, and no one else is allowed to put anything on it. Oh, remember, though, remember, though, the first, the first deal was actually with Singular. Yes, yeah. it was Singular. So, so it was just they became AT&T by the time they finally came out because they, they went through an acquisition thing. They, were, they partnered with Singular. And they brought out the, their phone, and they said, "This is our phone." And no one. The reason they they made such a big the the biggest thing that came out with the iPhone was the fact that they started to tell the carriers what was and what was not going to go on the phone. Mm-hmm. That was huge. Before then, you got a BlackBerry, and if the BlackBerry came from AT and T, it had every AT and T app known to man on it. If you bought a Verizon phone, there was a million Verizon apps that came on that phone. And then Apple came out of the iPhone and said, hey, you're going to sell a million of these things, and you're not going to put a single piece of your software on it. Sorry. And AT&T went, uh, I guess. And AT&T became the second biggest carrier in the U.S. off of the iPhone alone. People wanted to go to AT&T to get the iPhone. Mm-hmm. I'm, not jumping Ver- I'm not jumping ship from AT&T to Verizon to get a Samsung Galaxy S3. I'm not jumping ship to get a Galaxy Nexus. I'm jumping ship because I need better service, and you both have the iPhone. So, so, now so it's less my of a choice. Cho- my choice is of the carrier, mm-hmm. not of the device. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's important. Which also That's a- creates sort of an arms race for um, reception that hasn't existed before, wherein you're not fighting for, for phone manufacturers. Like Right now, Verizon is about to win... AJ's business because ATT, AT&T is doing a crappy job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and, and along that, let's talk about carriers. Um, they tried to actually step down. I think he'd be interested in this. And we talk, and I think we mentioned this a little bit, but they, they, they uh, T-Mobile is going to have the iPhone unlocked. They're even going to have the, what is it, the micro SIM, mini SIM, whatever they got going on now uh, that, that, that uh, the iPhone uh, 5 is going to require. And they're supporting it. They're overhauling their system. So everything, like, you know, if you're in Pittsburgh and have good T-Mobile service, now you won't be stuck on edge. Like, I know Chill in the chat room, uh, that's the thing. He, he doesn't have the jailbreak anymore. It's going to be four or $500 to get that, that jailbreaking phone. But you're already almost paying that and jumping through hoops if you want to have your iPhone on T-Mobile. I almost wanted – somebody said uh, – I don't remember where I saw this or when I saw it. But I believe that somebody said that T-Mobile was selling straight-up iPhones. Yeah. Not yeah. putting on contract or anything like that. No, you can go not. to T-Mobile and buy an out-of-contract iPhone. They're rolling it out in all their stores, apparently, that they're going to just have unlocked iPhones. You can come in, buy one. Yes, it's going to be more expensive, but you're, not, you're also not going to be under contract for two years. And I, I think this is going to be the first big step. You know, because T-Mobile, yes, they're number three, four, wherever they land and all that. Uh, but they're still big enough of a name that most people want, you know, there's a good number of people still walking into T-Mobile stores. If they get used to that idea, well, really, I don't need a contract, right? You know, and, and that this is actually cheaper in the long run. I think T-Mobile themselves were saying how you were making out better because you weren't under contract in the long run, even though you paid more for the phone right out. So well, how much are they? So the phones are, I think it's what six fifty for an iPhone five. I 16, thought 50. it was. Um, I, I don't think they've really even rolled out the unlock prices. Um, they might still have the uh, former iPhone prices up here. I'll, I'll look. I'll look these up real quick. I don't think the prices changed. The no. prices didn't change for like a 
the full retail price that no one really knows because they always think like, oh, the iPhone's 200 bucks. Yeah. No, it's not. It's actually like $650 and your contract basically pays for that over the life of it. Mm-hmm. Um, my contract is paid for a number of them over the life of it. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. You can flip that phone at the end for a solid four to 450. So you really only end up paying 200 and you can just go buy another one later on and not have to worry about like next year when the iPhone 5S comes out. Mm-hmm. You can do that. I don't um, think I don't think they have the 5 listed on here uh just yet. Uh but you can get an unlocked uh 4S for 549. That's not bad. And I'm looking at uh I'm looking at the 16 gigabyte version. So I think this is equivalent cuz I don't think they've upgraded this yet for uh for the iPhone 5 pricing. Well, it says from $99, but I thought those $99 ones were supposed to be the 8 gigabyte. Listen, if you can get it if you can get a, a ninety nine dollar phone on T Mobile. Is that what you were just saying? No, 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 a, no, no. I'm saying I the ninety nine dollar ones were the um under contract ones, like with AT and T oh. and all of them. But they do have the contract free pricing as well. And let me see if they have them on the pre orders. I, I don't think they, they offer them on the pre orders. Um No, they don't. You can only yeah, you can only get the ones with, with carrier certain carriers. And that starts at one ninety nine, two ninety nine, three ninety nine, of course. Um, so yeah, you're probably looking at five fifty, six fifty uh, when when that stuff all gets rolled out. You know, they're not going to drop the price of the iPhone four S's until they start having that option for the five. You know, right? So, but you know, maybe those will be cheaper. But if it's cheaper, if you can get you know an unlocked uh, iPhone four S for like three fifty, that's what you pay for your Nexus, AJ. Yes, if I could do that, if I could get an iPhone, an unlocked iPhone. For three fifty, if Google started that one, good for you, Google. I will drop three fifty a year, no problems. Yeah, if yeah. I can get I, an unlocked so- iPhone, if I can get an unlocked iPhone, it, the problem is that Google's basically selling these at price. Yeah, this is a three hundred fifty. I pay three hundred fifty dollars to Google. This is entirely unlocked. I don't owe them. I don't owe Google anything on my contract or anything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I just. Down. I just I just use it, and then I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to actually get my money back in a little bit more. Thanks, open market concepts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's that's really what it comes down to is that it, the the phone selling market is actually really good. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm actually very mad because I did sell uh, an iPhone four. I sold it for two hundred eighty dollars uh, right around Labor Day weekend, and it's currently lost in the postal system. <laughs> somewhere in Boston. So if you're listening to this show and you work in the one of the Boston post offices, preferably the very large distribution center that you guys have there, you give me a call because I'd really like to know where that phone is because I'd like it back, please. Thanks. All right. We want to touch on this. Uh, yeah, we have so many stories lined up here. I, th- I think I might have to do something different with them. But we need to talk about the uh, one thing that uh, kind of is a it's a controversial thing, I guess, with the new <laughs> iPhone. Uh, Rob, uh, uh, the the uh, lightning connector. Speak is, to them, Rob. Is apparently an issue. Rob, tell me what's going on with the lightning adapter here. All right. So uh, among silly names of things to start with, Thunderbolt, lightning, come on. Uh, At least there's I, a theme. Yeah. You know, lion, panther, mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. They're good with those. Yeah. I mean, I, what I, I guess we should figure out what the next... Um, the next like naturally occurring thing is going to be the title of an Apple product. Like, naturally occurring series of things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Root, uh, tree, leaf. Right, yeah. I'd buy an apple leaf. Hey. Huh, apple leaf? Get it? Uh, apple tree? Uh, oh, why didn't I? Uh, <laughs> oh. It's better than desserts. It's <laughs> a lot better than desserts. <laughs> because nobody... Oh, I'm not even going to go down that deep, dark hole. Uh... Anyway, so uh, everybody's used to the the big fancy giant connector, the giant one sided stupid connector that we have right now, um, <laughs> that uh, fits half the time. Uh, uh-huh. Is big enough to hold like a handful of lint. Um, also big enough to short out your phone uh, if you happen to have it upside down in your pocket and it rains. Mm. Um, uh, big enough and uh, poorly designed enough. I mean, it was it was great at the time, but uh, badly designed enough that like the pins can bend and the little things can bend. And then some of the connectors have uh, barbs on them, so you can't pull them out. Some of them do. So realistically, in a world where things are streamlined and perfect and wonderful and brushed aluminum, it's kind of a crappy thing. 
Uh, so Apple says, "Hey, let's uh, let's let's take a, a note from our MagSafe adapter book, which everybody seems to be pretty happy with, and let's make a double-sided, simple little tiny thing that just goes in, comes out. That's it. You don't need a flashlight to see if like the icons on the top or not. You don't have to figure out if you have a cable that's like four years old or two years old as far as whether or not you have to press buttons on the side for it to come out. We're just going to make your life easier. But oh wait, you bought a speaker dock six months ago." And that speaker dock has the old style connector on it. Oh no, your life is over because, uh, wait a minute, there's a metaphor here. It's almost like developing software on somebody else's API and then complaining when they change it. Yeah, or or if you bought a Buick in the last few years that has a built-in iPhone dock connector. Mm, mm. Which is why Apple facilitated the, the, the little adapter thing. But honestly, people, mm-hmm. like the Buick thing, nah. You know, it's inconvenient, sure. Mm -hmm. It changes the experience of the person who has that Buick to make it slightly less, but it is a is it is a hurt for the minority, for the better of the of the major of the majority. (laughs) Big words. If you got yeah, Uh, and and and, and the adapter apparently um, there's some analog signals, some other stuff in there that the adapter. You know, actually, we don't know if the adapter is going to transmit all that information like if you have controls on your dock that control the iphone they may not work anymore through this new connector who is saying that uh different the 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 same people that i listen to have found articles saying for and against that yeah i I mean honestly until it comes out we don't know yeah i'll believe that when i see it i mean it would be quite a stretch for them to take off that sort of compatibility uh Mm -hmm. i would say like Maybe that compatibility has changed. Maybe the apps that are interfacing need to change to update. Because I know, like, I mean, if Bose is making hardware for the iPhone 5, you could be pretty damn sure that your iPhone is going to be able to speakers on Bose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, good news, everybody. Hmm. I have the new Twitter profile. Oh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is Is it up yet? Uh, hold on. Let me let me fix my uh, one that I. Yeah, hold on. Let me fix the. How do I change accounts? iPad. How do I do that? Which, uh, which <laughs> I got the new iPad app, and it allowed me to change my. Wh- which of your oh, accounts is it? Yeah. Hold on. Is hold on. I'm I'm fixing it. Hold on. Hold Can on. we just let me change that? No, I need. I don't need that. I need this, and then I need that, and then choose oh, wow, existing photo. Is. Wow! Look at that. Which account are you on? Uh, uh your per- your private one. Oh, yes, that one. Hold on. Let me give you a new one. Uh, no, wait, not that picture. I don't want that picture. That would be bad. Um, That's interesting. Let's do that one, hmm. and we'll do that, and then we'll do that, and now you can go to my public one. Okay. Let's try that. Yeah, that's a cool picture. I like that. Let's let's go with that one. Now, uh, hold on. I need to refresh uh, you there. apparently. Wow, oh, putting all my business on blast. It's actually not showing it on your public one. On this uh, one? Refresh. It is. I see it. I got it. Oh, I'm not seeing it yet. I got it. I'm seeing it. Nope. Yep. I'm looking at it on mine right now. That's looking weird. at it on mine. Twitter.com slash AJ Koftig. Follow me. Okay. Oh, there it is. There it yep. is. Yep. It's like a little bit. Yep. There he is. There he is. How about that? So, yeah, rolling out. Looks like you just got it. You got it on both your accounts, it looks like. Yeah. So I, Here's what you do. Uh, I guess to push it out to your to your thing. Uh, is you go download the Twitter app for iPad. Really? <laughs> Where's my iPad at? When you go to your That's profile, right. it'll show you the new... It asks you what you want your... your it shows you your profile in that like profile view, the new one. Okay. And then you can tap the gear, edit your profile, and change your header photo. And that's wow. where my, my pictures came off of my iPad. Wow. All right. Like I said, we have a lot of stories here, but I, I want to make sure we touch on just one because this was kind of big news in the last week. Last Thursday, they announced all the details for the Wii U. Uh. Woo! Um, I'm interested. I'm not excited like I was for the first one. I'm not staying in line all night for this one. Um, and that seems to be the problem. Where's the Where's the general interest for this one? Let me uh, bring up some There's stuff not. for you. Chashi, you, you, you've you been following this story, right? Not really. Not really? Because you're not interested in this one. Plus, you had a vacation in the middle of it. Yeah, I took a vacation. What have you been hearing about it? Um, that it's better to spend $50 more dollars to get the extra it's, stuff. It's deluxe. Yeah, it's the, ridiculous. The deluxe. 
It's a uh, eight gigabytes for two for three hundred, and then for fifty dollars more, you get you get thirty two gigabytes of onboard memory. Yeah. What is that? And you get the, uh, the Nintendo Land game. Yeah, Nintendo Land, and I think a charger. You get everything, but for fifty dollars less, you get nothing. Yeah, and it doesn't come Although, with doesn't come with any Wiimotes or anything like that. Uh, certain gaming websites have gotten their hands on the the warranty information for the Wii the Wii U controller, mm -hmm. um, and Nintendo is still insisting that they're not going to sell extra controllers in the United States at least. So what happens when you break one? What happens when your little little kid sister busted in half? It's a screen. Well, it's uh, like any other iPad. The article on uh, Kotoku. Uh, said that uh, if you blend your Ninta your your Wii U controller, yes, they will replace it. Hmm. Well, it's good to know that the blending is covered. Um, <laughs> uh, no, basically they're they're stating that they will replace the uh, controller, um, but there will be a fee. And and the the whole the whole thing that doesn't make any sense is the fact that the, each console uh, supports two controllers. Two of the Wii U's? Yeah, two of the Wii U controllers but, out of the box. So there's the support there, like maybe for down the line? It, I don't know. It, as of right now, Nintendo has no interest or... It, and it comes with no nunchucks, yeah. no nunchucks, no Wiimotes, anything like that. Yep. Uh, but but it, it does work with all the old ones, right. apparently. So, um, but other than that, I, the, the more interesting thing thing i thought was that uh you know how google tv was supposed to interface with everything and kind of bring everything together and be kind of a layer between you and your cable provider and tivo and all that kind of crap well we apparently pulled it off um they basically signed uh they actually have deals in place with um most of the cable providers uh through something i think it's called itv if i'm not mistaken um, or TVI or something like that, and you're able to control and search through Hulu. They'll have Hulu Plus, Netflix, and now Amazon Prime right out of the box. Uh, it will interface with a TiVo, and it will uh, kind of do a layer on top of live programming on television. Uh, to the point, let me see if I can find something here in this video. Um, like there, yeah, there's uh, some football, some, some sports stuff going on, and it'll actually throw up from the example they're showing some side by side, -by -side stuff. Uh, like with a football game, you know, it, it's that second. It, it's still that kind of like second screen experience. Like here, they, somebody found a program and actually lists where are these in the services. Um, like I think it showed ABC, Amazon Prime. You could buy it, or is it with a Hulu Plus subscription? So I don't know. Is this is this um, is this competitive? You know, I, not on price. Definitely not on price. You're not buying. Th you're paying three fifty for this. You might as well get a Google TV at that point. Um, but for being something that you're going to get for your kids because they want the new Mario game, uh, and, and it happens to be like, Owen can do this thing too. That seems like what the Xbox did. You know, the Xbox got in everybody's living room because they wanted to play Halo, and now we're all watching Netflix on it. I, I, is this their kind of sneak into the, 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 the living room like everybody else? They're, they're trying to, but they're too late. They're, they're too late. Okay. Like you said, people are buying the Wii for their children. Mm -hmm. They're not going out to buy the Wii for uh, Nintendo TV. Okay. So if they're going to buy a Wii, they're buying a Wii already. They're not... This isn't going to make them... make. This isn't gravy for that, no. at least, or anything like that? No, because the ones that are going to go out to buy the Wii just to have the Wii mm -hmm. already have an Xbox in their living room. Or already ha or watching stuff like this on the Roku, or you, know, you have right. the Xbox, can do the the smart glass when they put that out later this year. Um, definitely, definitely. What do you guys think? What do you, what do you think about this as a different alternative kind of TV watching experience? I I, I appreciate that Nintendo's trying something. Mm -hmm. um, Sony made their mark in the sand when they said we play Blu-rays, and then forgot about that whole impending physical media is dead. Uh, thing and then um, you have Microsoft who has made content deals with effectively everyone on the planet to basically say oh do you have an Xbox you basically have a second cable box it, it's cool mm -hmm. um, Nintendo is, is, is putting the gravy on I think they said it, just like Chachi said if somebody's going to go buy a Wii they're going to go buy a Wii they're not buying it for this but hey, that's some sweet gravy on top. When I bought my Xbox, I bought my Xbox to play video games. 
now that I have like the ability, to, well, I don't have the ability to watch ESPN because uh, Time Warner still hasn't gotten its crap together. Get it together. Um, I can watch Hulu Plus and Netflix and all that other stuff on my Xbox. That's gravy on top. Um, just like it, you know, it, it, instead of having to buy an Apple TV, I have my Xbox. Um, so there's that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would be. I would be. I think Nintendo would have been very dumb to not do anything at all. Uh, well, I think they had to make a move or else they were going to get left behind because <laughs> people want a device that can do that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. If you're going to buy a device for your kids to play games, you might as well get some extra use out of it so mom can watch movies on Netflix and dad can if, watch you know shows on Hulu+. Plus. your TV doesn't already do that. Chachi, do you have a TV that already does that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. All right. Sword, do you, does your TV already do that? Nope, I went for the cheap model. <laughs> I went for the hey. Walmart Vizio. <laughs> Got whatever hey, I could uh, for 550 bucks. Hey, Rob, do you even have a TV? <laughs> nope. 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 Okay. <laughs> my, my TV also doesn't do those sorts of things. So, and I out still of, think well, generally well, most hey, people's me, TV don't. Let me just point out that I don't use the feature on my TV. Mm-hmm. But it's there. And it's again, it's like it's like anything else. It, it, it's not the reason you bought the TV, right? You know, like I I, I bought a TV because I needed a TV. Like they bought they bought a big 50, 50 inch for uh, doing some AirPlay applications at my one work, and I I saw a set of four three uh, D glasses. They definitely did not buy that thing for the three D glasses. It was like, oh hey, and if we happen to ever find a three D movie ever, uh, and a Blu Ray player that supports it, hey, we can watch this stuff. I would just like to uh, bring up one more thing before we take off. Hmm. Um, <laughs> over at insertcointobegin.com we covered Zanga's responses to EA's lawsuit oh yeah um, Zanga laughed at EA okay uh, essentially it's it, it's come down to a, a schoolyard fight uh, Zanga said that uh, EA's copyright infringement lawsuits have absolutely no merit and then turned around and sued or is suing EA for, and I, 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 I quote, uh, counterclaims because they, uh, which addresses actions by EA, we believe to be anti-competitive and unlawful business press practices. Uh, and this is response because EA uh, put uh, do not compete paperwork throughout their entire company to stop their employees from leaving and going to work for, for other gaming companies. Because Zenga tried and unsuccessfully attempted to steal their employees, which they got the designs from. Mm. So, in this day and age of frivolous lawsuits, there are two more companies that are uh, wasting time and money in court. <sighs> That's all I got. Okay. I wanted to bring it up. Yay, it Zynga. Was... Eh. Eh, it's Zynga. Whatever. Um, all right. All right. With that, anything else we want to touch on real quick before we get out of here, guys? I've got news. Oh, we got news. Rob's got news. Is my, uh, my AT&T iPhone 5 order just moved from backordered to, to zero quantity backward. What does that mean? It means it's not backordered anymore, which means it should show up on time. Nice. Hey. Basically, if you didn't, if you ordered past like eight thirty a.m., everybody's orders on AT and T. Like, there's a, a column for quantity ordered, quantity shipped, and quantity backordered. And right now, if you ordered past like eight thirty, everybody has quantity ordered one, quantity backordered one, which everybody was taking to mean like you'll get it in two weeks. But I don't have back orders anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But you name. still don't have like an actual UPS shipping or anything like that. No, nobody should get one of those until Friday or Thursday. Okay. And with that, the idea is so the the way the supply chain works is it's not like AT and T is receiving a shipment of iPhones. It's that they pass your order information to Apple, and Apple is working on getting them to the U.S. from China, which is happening for most people. Yep. Um, and, uh, and then on Friday, they have to worry about getting them out to everybody. But they're going to do that cool thing where no ma- even if your phone arrives in the States on Wednesday, you're not going to get it until Friday. 
You're going to hoard it? Yeah, they're going to park it in a distribution center on the West Coast. So expect, I I, I don't know if Apple has exerts that level of control over shipping in other countries because I've noticed that sometimes you'll get like an early review of an iPhone on like Thursday from like the UK or Germany or something like that because Apple doesn't, you know, control the pipeline all that tight over there. Um, but here in the States, yeah, good luck getting one before Friday unless you're Walt Mossberg. Yep. Walt, Uncle Walt will have one. Don't worry. All right. And with that, let's go and get out of here. Like I said, I had a lot of stories. I think I want to go and put the stories back out on uh, as the, as unposted over at on the Facebook and the uh, Google Plus if you guys want to discuss any further with them. Uh, come join us there. Uh, uh, I'll just have to make a note to do that. Uh, so keep an eye on that again. Hey, we're over on awesomecast.com. That is broken right now. I'll work on that WordPress thingy going on. Uh, drop us an email at contact at awesomecast.com. Follow us on Twitter at awesomecast. Hashtag us, uh, hashtag AC119 uh, for anything corresponding to this episode. Uh, of course, like I said, we're on Facebook and Google Plus. Please converse us through the week. I'm I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Um, I've been blogging again at sorgatron.com a little bit. Um, and go go there and see Chachi get kicked in the nuts while he's just Yay. doing his job at ringside. Right in the knish. Rob De La Crate is at robjdlc.com. That's also his Twitter handle. Yep. Yep. Anything to throw Iontank.com. Iontank.com, the very fancy, fancy Iontank.com. It's a wonderland of wonderful things. Yep. Right in the knish. Yep. Also, in the knish. AJ Cuffix at virtualpotholes.com. That is correct. Uh, in addition to uh, virtualpotholes.com, you can find me and all of my wonderful coworkers at veroblogs.com. That is V A R R O W B L O G S dot com, uh, where uh, it's a syndication of all of the blog posts of employees of my company, and it's all of our personal blogs that kind of go together. Oh, so, so like, you can see them there too. So your virtual pothole stuff goes through on this? Also does, yes. Awesome, uh, Vero awesome. Blogs is a, a really cool thing. My company's. I have a really cool company. I really do. And uh, our, our one of the founders is big into social media. So he said, I want people to blog. I want us to have blogs. Uh, for, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, just why, let me just jump over your head real quick here. Uh, VMware introduced a new product, vSphere 5.1. Uh, and internally, we made a uh, big push to say, okay, we want to be out in the forefront with blog posts when it's announced. And the, when the, because we had an actual PR embargo, we were not allowed to blog about this stuff until after the announcement. So uh, we we create we all wrote blog posts and then pushed them all out at the same time. So people were following us for the news, which was kind of awesome. Awesome! I just tweeted that out on the Awesome Cast account, so everybody can go check that out. And that's veroblogs.com. Chachi, he's over at insertcointobegin.com, where they're talking uh, about all things video games. Yep. Well, that's what we do. That's what he does? Yes. And also, there'll be a new Unsung uh, released Monday where uh, I think we go to the woods and uh, we talk about Give Camp, actually, uh, on AJ's tip. If anybody interested in, uh, you know, kind of website building for nonprofits, go check out, I think it's pghgivecamp.org. Um, but if you just could do Pittsburgh Give Camp and Google, it'll pop up. We'll have something there. And we'll hopefully have them on the awesome cast here in the future. Uh, to talk about that. I know it's the week before PodCamp. PodCampPittsburgh.com, uh, that's coming up next month. Uh, but we do have a panel discussion from last week that I was involved with with social media. Uh, Sean Graham and Deanna really talked more than I did. Uh, but still, it's a good listen. It's over at PodCampPittsburgh.com. There are stuffed bears flanking us uh, the whole time. Check out the pictures for that one. Um, so go check that out again. Um, and SorgatronMedia.com is where everything else is, all the uh, things that we create uh, under that banner. So go check out there. Uh, join us here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We have a fancy new chat room that everybody seems to be enjoying. And uh, and that's where we all converse. And you guys can uh, uh, influence the show directly like uh, like these guys in here. Of course, Chill has been in there. Riz, um, I believe Bobby's been in there. Alexander Cars has been in there joining us. Uh, so thanks, guys, a lot. You've been an awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>